Welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker and here we are in our how to learn from the AI video. The AI is where the majority of the pops in the world are at GameStart. It's where the majority of the GDP of the world is at GameStart. It's where the majority of the market is at GameStart. And so the way that the AIs behave is gonna have a really, really big impact on you and your development as a nation um, because the what they develop is gonna, is gonna directly impact what you can pick up either through imperialism or through trade. And so you should understand the AI. Um, whether or not you're playing with a mod is going to have a big impact on what you should expect from the AI in terms of their economic development, in terms of their diplomatic uh, behavior. Um, and so if you're playing with like Lotus or Enbuild or Arrow or whatever, then you can definitely still do an observer only mode for yourself. Uh, but this is aimed at the vanilla AI because I think the vanilla AI, I like the idea of it. So for people who don't understand the way that the vanilla AI is supposed to work, the vanilla AI is supposed supposed to operate based off of these strategies. They govern their long and short term goals and how they will proceed with making decisions in regards to other countries. And they are supposed to be reflective of the current government as well as the rank. Um, and these strategies come in a, a couple of different flavors. As far as I can tell, there seems to be one that's mostly economic, one that's mostly political, and one that's mostly diplomatic, or at least that's what I'm going to assume is is going on here um but there's a lot of black box nature when it comes to the ai um a lot of the modders are kind of frustrated in regards to that simply because you know they want to be able to modify the the ai behaviors in a more complicated way um but and and build at least says that like his his economic development is purely scripted and so that that's that it's not hard to make a purely scripted ai economic development plan that works better than the, the Paradox AI, but that's because the Paradox AI isn't really trying to do the same thing, right? It's not trying to just do GDP go up, it's also trying to role play. Um, and so that's gonna have a pretty big impact on the, the way that these nations are gonna behave. So just looking over them, I think the, the first and most important one to just get a feel for like what it what it's going to do to the behaviors of the nation is this industrialize the urban industrial base um thing because of course that is i wish i wish that this is also an aside i wish that they allowed um observers to dismiss these messages or just not see them um because otherwise they're a little annoying when you're doing observer you'll you'll find that out uh, but yeah, the, these economic ones are going to be really important because they're going to determine what sort of resources are moving around inside the markets of uh, your competitors, rivals, friends, trade partners, puppets, whatever. Um, and so if they're in, on this industrial base, hopefully what they're doing is they are building up a construction sector, which France is doing. They're building urban industrial bases, which France is doing. They're lining them up maybe with what they need. Hey, looks like France is doing that too. Awesome. Um, but what they aren't doing, for instance, is they are not really using economies of scale particularly well. They seem to mostly be building in random states, um, which is one of the biggest opportunities. See, look, they're building a construction sector. But um, this is one of the biggest opportunities for you as a player to beat the AI long term, because the for anybody who, who's played the game enough, you should know that rather than building one paper mill in Alsace-Lorraine and one in uh, Poitou, that you build them both in the same, the same location, because then you get a throughput bonus. Um, so you see here it says throughput total plus six percent. What that means is Rhone, because it's so it's so big and so well built up, it's going to use six percent more of this, but it's also going to get six percent more of this. And so what that means, of course, is that you're getting this economy of scale. You are both increasing supply and demand um, out of the same number of construction points by concentrating them in one location. And that's why that's why you see people building like all of their buildings in one state. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't build them all in one state, but you should definitely build way more in one state than what the AI is currently doing. That's, that's an AI behavior that you can learn from in a negative sense, and that's a way that you can like fight against the AI. And it, but it's also a way that you're gonna have to interact with the AI if you conquer any of their territories, expect it to be annoying. Not all of the AI is even behaving the same way. So France, you're operating 121 uh, at P 
plus 20 gold reserves. As far as I can tell, the AI does not make adjustments to taxation or government wages or military wages. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. It, it also might be a, an observed behavior that isn't true, but I, I have not in probably 25 hours seen them make meaningful adjustments to this. Russia, so like you'll occasionally see the AI because they don't make adjustments to taxation levels and stuff. They, they will occasionally build up a reasonable size construction sector and then just not use it. Um, and so I think that's something where, I don't know if that's an, a, a strategy or if that's a behavior that's non-strategy developed, but like they, they need to fix that behavior of AIs. They have 300,000 in their investment pool. I can't tell you why, um, and that's kind of frustrating, and that's why I really do think that one of the things that Paradox should do is make the AI more moddable. I think that's I think that's a big a big opportunity there. So yeah, here is here in Brazil we have Pedro II. Um, he's a famous reformer. This is the dude who ended up ending slavery in Brazil. Um, member of the House Bragança. And then over in Portugal we have his sister. And both of them are intelligentsia monarchs. And yet here in Portugal, um, with a 36% landowner, we have a conservative agenda. And over in Brazil with a 33% landowner, we have a liberal agenda. So build for yourself whenever you're watching this. And of course, like this, this up here is completely unacceptable, right? Um, we have Brazil with one of its, its strategies is expand resource industries. We're at 11 construction, max gold reserves and 360 investment pool. And of course it's not even adjusting taxation, um, construction goods, government wages. It's just not, the AI, the AI isn't really like doing anything right now is the problem. Um, and so that's why I, I really do think that the AI should be one of the, the focuses of patch 1.12 and for that matter, patch 1.2. Um, I think they highlighted AI as being one of the things that they wanted to work on for the game. And I think that they were right to do so because it, it, it sure doesn't seem like it scales particularly well, right? Because France, remember, France is, France is not just it's not just growing, it's growing its growth. It's up to 140 construction now. Um, Russia is still doing nothing. Brazil is still doing maybe nothing. Let's see, the Liberal Party just won and the Conservative Party lost. There we go, there we go, finally. Um, but yeah, so the AI does sometimes do uh, what it what it's supposed to be doing. Um, Brazil, in this case, we had that election and the Liberal Party won and the Liberal Party is being brought in to form a government. OK, cool. So now maybe they will do something in regards to a liberal agenda, right? Because that's what he wants. He wants the liberal reforms. So we've discovered what it is that um, Pedro II thinks the the liberal reforms uh means he thinks it means promote social mobility which i i mean i guess but like instead of promoting social mobility if instead he was to say um bolster the intelligentsia then he could have a much stronger uh way of of interacting with his his stated goal right because remember here in brazil with promote liberal reforms they they're supposed to be promoting liberal reforms so we've talked a little bit about the ai and how it operates in regards to its what i i think is its economic strategy and what i think is its political strategy and now it's a conservative agenda pedro why what is happening with you young fella why how are you a conservative agenda now you're an intelligentsia reformer it's supposed to represent more than just the monarch of course it also represents the government but they're they were on a liberal agenda. They got a liberal party that won the election and now they switched over to a conservative agenda and now they're working on private schools. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's way too black boxy in regards to like where these strategies come from um, and what they do. I'd like to see some plus minus modifiers over here um, just cause like it's, it, it makes no sense to me, but, but more than that, um internal stuff i think the ai mostly is going to be useful for you at least understanding how it's going to behave um when it comes to your diplo plays so diplo plays obviously you got to have interests in the same area um if the ai does not have an interest in your area diplo plays there are going to be a lot easier that's really important and so you should know that the way that they behave is not really like entirely random um it's going to be influenced by things. It's going to be influenced by their attitude towards you, 
but also their attitude towards the other nation in question like if we were going to be attacking the netherlands as brazil to try to take control of of guyana because we have expand core territory um which it says that if we attack the netherlands here that those people will join either side or remain neutral but of course for those of you who who know what's up uh invariably what we'll end up doing is attacking them and then there will probably be like a world war because there usually is right any anytime you have brazil attacking the netherlands for dutch guyana it means that like russia and the uk somehow get involved every single time every single time so the the changes in 1.1 um did change oh my god illegitimate government what is what is happening here what is happening here yeah all right so yeah ai behaviors are not yet fully formed is the 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 headline here um but that said i i like the idea of the ai in um Vic in Vicky 3, I think that the world that they want to build for Vicky 3 is very cool. I've, I think the strategies idea is very cool. I wish that there was more player feedback. Like, nothing makes me crazier than uh, going into a Diplo screen in a 4X game and not understanding why somebody is saying no to me in a trade. Because, um, like, they then tell me what you want, right? Tell me what you want. And right now, the AI kind of doesn't even really do that. Oh, nope. They switched back to liberal reforms. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's something going on here. Um, but they, they've switched over to liberal reforms, and now they're doing propertied women. And so they're going to have a civil war over police force, I guess, is what we're going to see, maybe. Um, but yeah, the, the, the AI does... It, they do change laws. They do change laws. So we've got... A diplomatic play in Senegal um, and now it appears as though Great Britain is intervening against France who has a Spanish ally and is also fighting the Netherlands so they the AI is about to fight a, uh, a world war over here and so we can we can watch them and just kind of like see how they're trying to behave so this this is not the AI just mobilizing and watching the AI is actively prosecuting this war on the behalf of Futatoro? I I don't know the, is there anything in these strategies that suggests that um, Great Britain should be interested in fighting a world war like this over nothing i don't think they should and so that's that's sort of an ai behavior that is occurring in game but you need to be aware of and you need to plan around it and you need to and you need to have a, a way to react to it because the fact of the matter is no matter what you do um that if you're playing on harsh aggressive at least the ai is going to get into fights that they gain nothing from especially if it's going to hurt you um and so just expect them to 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 fight you and you'll you'll behave better this is this is an insane war um we've got the ashanti also got pulled in by great britain demanding that they open their market for some reason they're they're a french puppet why did why did great britain add open the market of a french puppet what are they doing why are they evaluating things like this why are people dying stop dying if Great Britain is is actually genuinely interested in economic imperialism, rather than saying, "Hey, France, no, you can't get a Fudo Toro," the then Great Britain should say, "Oh yeah, that's that's cool, that's fine." While you're doing that, we're gonna start puppeting Sokoto and Dahomey and, and Oyo and Benin and stuff like that. Or, um, sure, yeah, that's fine, but we'll go over here and puppet Madagascar while you're busy. Like, I want to know why the UK is in this war. What what part of their agenda does it support? It, it does it does make sense in the sense that they are rivals with France, but just because you're rivals with someone doesn't necessarily mean that the best way for you to fight them is to fight them all of the time. You fight them when you're stronger, right? That's that's the, the number one rule when it comes to beating your rivals. Fight them when you're stronger. And instead, the UK is at 70 construction and 18 million gold reserves. Oh, all right. Is Russia is Russia constructing things? Nope. <laughs> is Russia constructing things? Nope. Oh, Russia. How big's your investment pool now? It's 430k. Oh, because they they also pissed off their landowners enough that now they aren't giving them investment pool anymore. Yep, that makes sense. 
So yeah, that's that's something that you should learn um, by just moving around the map and like looking at what's going on in the different countries. The U.S. is not doing anything. The U.S. pretty consistently does not do anything. Um, like they they just don't build anything. It doesn't matter how many different runs I do on the vanilla AI, and it's it, I don't think it has anything to do with their issues in regards to expanding down here. Because like the U.S. isn't tiny. They're a great power. Most of their resources are over here. There's some handy things over here like oil, but they're not as critical to the early development of your country as spending your gold reserves and building a construction sector. And instead, the U.S. is just running at unrealized taxes with a gigantic amount of gold reserves. They're blowing over it. They're, they're using their investment pool, at least. What is, what is the Ottoman Empire doing? Nothing. The Ottoman Empire is doing nothing. <laughs> the Ottoman Empire is doing nothing. The most important thing that it can that it can teach you is how not to play. Um, but a very a very strong negative example can also be useful. And so what I, what I want to encourage you to do is to be aware of the current weaknesses of the AI. Not necessarily so you can exploit them, but so that you can prepare for that. Because like if you're trying to if you're trying to have a good game in terms of uh, developing your trade networks and, and your reliance on the markets of the AI, you can't do that um, because you're just you're not going to get it from them. They're, half of the half of the AI just aren't going to be building anything for like most of the game. If anybody in the, the comments knows how to um, determine the attitude of an AI against a second AI, let me know, because that would be really helpful. Because um, that 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 is also very important, right? If the AI is protective towards you, but protective towards somebody else, and you and you attack them, and they intervene against you, I don't know if that's wrong. Um, but like, I just the the AI the AI is. Are you still fighting? Yeah, just like look at the state of this war now. They are they supposed to be piecing out by now? I th I think they should be because the AI is supposed to be interested in in white peace um, more when there's a war that's just going nowhere. And boy, I would I would call this a war that's going nowhere, right? Thirteen million pounds spent um, versus eight million pounds spent. God, like I guess that both parties can leave satisfied that they're hurting each other's economic development but like that's not good they should be interested in white piecing at this point because the ai is supposed to be interested in white piecing when france finally goes to zero are they gonna accept white piece uh so because of the way peace exception acceptance works and this is something where like the the ai has cascading implications for the rest of the game this right here this peace acceptance thing is gonna tell you kind of the whole story size of french gold reserves minus 49 um size of british gold reserves minus 50. and so they they wanted in patch 1.1 to come up with a way to encourage the ai to be less desirous to have these infinitely long completely pointless wars because because remember if france were to capitulate here open ashanti market would be the pressed war goal because that's the thing that can be pressed against france what does that do to you literally nothing that does literally nothing to you as france um it means that your puppet is forced into free trade oh no right <laughs> what the heck um but because the the AI is just thinking about things this way, and because the AI does not currently manage its economy particularly well, they end up with enormous gold reserves. And so trying to win wars of attrition against the AI is completely pointless because you can't do it without having like complete naval do dominance. Um, 99% of the time because most of these AI are just going to have like enormous gold reserves from doing nothing all game except I guess Russia <laughs> Russia Russia is going to do nothing all game and also have no money <laughs> it's just the Austrian AI is up to a thousand construction points good for you good for you Austria you're you are becoming my my new favorite uh AI to watch um, one of the other consequences of these incredibly long wars is that they are going to have uh, an outsized impact on the nature of the development of the economies of the countries involved, not only by forcing them to spend money on nothing, um, but also by forcing them to build stuff that isn't really going to be useful for them long term. So France, because they got sucked into this war, they're going to end up with an enormous arms industry, which 
means that they're set if they want to keep fighting, um, which is pretty good. But yeah, as soon as as soon as this war is over, of course, all of these armed industries that they've been building up um, to help keep their their balance their prices a little more balanced, they're not going to work anymore. All of these things are situational and short term. Other countries are trading with France. That's the one positive is that because they dramatically overbuilt all of these guns, people are now importing guns from them. That's helpful, um, but unfortunately for France, it's not really going to save them. They, they've, they've invested an enormous amount of money and resources into things that haven't grown their economy. Um, and on that same note, I mean, we're still over here with 1,300 construction points. A million investment pool? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like the they need to they need to slow down. Um, that's my recommendation for for Paradox is that they need to make sure that the things that they are working on. I understand that everyone's really excited about Vicky Three. I am too. Um, but despite the fact that I am excited about Vicky Three, I I do understand that some of the ideas need a little bit more time in the oven and a little more testing. And for that matter. We just need to make sure that they work like we they I don't know what's going on with corporate QA in, in Paradox right now. But like if they just if they just did what I what I have done here and run a game for 20 years with AI only, they would have known that patch 1.1 really it needs to be rethought entirely. This is not working. That's that's Walker. That's a uh, that's that's how to learn from the AI and uh, the patch 1.1.1. .1 .1. Take care.